Hello, everyone. Um, thank you so much for joining today's webinar. This is an important one for um, a lot of people who are um, starting their journey with VCPP. My name is Umar. I'm the product manager on VCPP Brown and Ingram Micro. I'll be joined with uh, Kwa today, who is a senior solution architect um, for end user computing at VMware. Uh, we, we welcome you, we both welcome you um, to our webinar today. We'll give it a couple of minutes for uh, people to join in. Um, if you're facing any audio problems, just let us know in the chat box so that we can um, uh, we can help with that. Uh, we have a full-fledged agenda today to, to go through. Um, this presentation is going to walk you through how you can make the most out of the mobility offering under the VCPP program. Um, this is uh, what we're going to be talking about. I'll walk you through um, how, what what it takes to join this program, what sort of trainings you may need, and also then we'll go into deeper side of the packaging of what sort of services and revenue streams you can generate through this program. So we'll give it a, a couple of minutes and then we'll start the presentation. By the way, folks, uh, you can uh, use the chat box to, uh, to, to, to contact us if you're facing any audio problems. Can you guys hear me okay? Let me know. I think one more minute to go. Perfect. Okay, once again, thank you everyone for joining in today's webinar. Uh, we will be talking a lot about VCPP today. VCPP stands for VMware Cloud Provider Program. It's actually an operational model um, under VMware product uh, catalog or product uh, offerings um, that offers you a pay-as-you-go model for VMware products and services. Today, however, we'll be more focused on the services side of the business, um, and that segment is called MSP, or Managed Service Provider Program. Uh, I welcome you all to the, to the webinar today. We'll be presenting uh, the, the VCBP program overview, the MSP segmentation, uh, what are the um, offerings we have overall, and then we'll more uh, dig down deeper into the mobility side of the business. Uh, my name is Omar. I'm the product manager uh, on uh, VCPP front at Ingram Micro, um, and I'm joined today um, by Kwa, who is a senior cloud solution architect uh, for end user computing at VMware. So let's give it a start. So today's agenda, um, we will be talking about the two models uh, that VCPP has. We'll be talking about the go-to-market strategies that people and, and you know companies have been using, the process flows, and then the most important, the meaty part of the of the presentation today is going to be the packaging part of how you can make the most out of the mobility offering. So if you guys are already using Workspace One, if you're using already the mobility services, if you have already been plugged into this MSP uh, program, but you are running out of the imagination of what sort of uh, revenue streams you can generate. Uh, we have Qua with us who can uh, walk you through that. And then at the end, I will talk a little bit about the VCBP team that we have at Ingram Micro, the dedicated team that we have. We have dedicated VDMs, we have dedicated solution architects. I'm the dedicated product manager on uh, VCBP front uh, at Ingram Micro, and we can help you join this journey. So let's get right into it. What you see on the slide is actually a lot of those subscription services that you may or may not use at the moment, but what we are seeing with the COVID-powered world that we are living in is 
the transition that um, organizations and consumers are making from being the owner of the licenses to the subscriber of the licenses. Um, that really helps you uh, get the most out of the product without really owning the risks that are attached to, to the ownership of the licenses. So this is the model that we are actually uh, seeing uh, happening since last year. We have seen growth in the, uh, in, in the subscription model we, and, and subscription means. We have uh, WorldSpace One, Horizon, BMC on AWS, a lot of different services offered on a subscription model. And what it also means, it's actually a monthly based program. So you don't really have to have an investment intensive mindset to really join the program or uh, join the subscription model, you really want to go month by month or you will want to go for you know six months. So it's actually helpful in, in the uncertainty environment around us these days. Um, there's a difference, I wanted to highlight this. Um, when you are transacting VMware licenses, um, basically there is a two different, a two, two points difference. Uh, one model is called the reselling model or perpetual model, uh, where you perpetually own the license. So what happens in this case is the relationship on the top of the screen. You see VMware produces a product, Ingram Micro and the resellers or the partners, no matter how much it hurts our ego, fact remains that we are just a transaction party. The license is actually owned by the customer and they perpetually own it. That's why they call it perpetual licensing model. Now, this model is not really sticky for a lot of partners because the relationship is very transactional. Now, don't confuse me with the fact that there are different cases for each model to adapt into, uh, and I'm not positioning one against the other, but the fact remains the ownership lies with the customer, and next year when the renewal comes in for the support of the license, they may want to choose a different partner. So as you can see from the basic understanding of the reselling model and the perpetual licensing landscape, is the reselling model is not really sticky for partners. However, when we go into the MSP uh, program structure, VMware is still the producer of the product. Ingram Micro is a transaction party, but you become the owner and the partner becomes the, uh, the controller of, 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 of the license that, that is owned. And you can uh, attach uh, different customers to it. If they're not paying on time, you can actually unplug them as you like. But there is also an additional thing with it, which is uh, you can wrap it around with your own PSO service. So if you have PSO component of offerings in, in, in your product portfolio, you can exponentially increase the, 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 the margin with, with any transaction that you have. So two things that are happening in the MSP model, you get the control, you can control all the licenses, you own the licenses, and you can act you can add up the, the margin by adding your PSO services and many other services. We'll be talking quite a lot about this in today's presentation. So VMware um, is offering you know, different pathways to, to the market. One is that we talked about the reselling model, which is the perpetual model, which is the biggest model uh, that, 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 that runs right now. Ingram Micro, by the way, stands um, as the only aggregator in Australia that offers the full-fledged offering by VMware. So we do have teams that are dealing with perpetual licensing. We do have teams like my team who is dealing with the cloud providers um, offering MSP and VCPP program. And then we have PSO teams at Ingram Micro that can help you configure all those complicated technical stuff. So uh, we, we are the only aggregator in Australia that offers all these services under one roof. And that actually makes your operations very easy. Uh, because you don't really have to deal with multiple invoices uh, and multiple uh, multiple teams to deal with. We have dedicated, um, well-equipped, technically equipped teams that can assist you throughout the pathway. Um, as I mentioned, we'll be talking about the two models. So VCPP, as I mentioned, VCPP had a bit of a journey to it. It used to be called as VSPP, which was VMware Service Provider Program. And now it's called VCPP, which is VMware Cloud Provider Program. And you can see the evolution happening now because um, the cloud uh, provider domain is expanding quite a bit, uh, especially in Australia, but overall in the world. Now, VCPP does have two distinct segmentations. One is called the rental, 
and the other one is called the MSP. Rental, uh, I'll go into detail of that, but just for the ease of conversation, rental is the blue part on the top of the screen and uh, the MSP is the green part at the bottom of the screen. If you look at the top right, for example, on the rental side, there are eligibility criteria so who can join the rental program and who can join the MSP program. On the rental side, there is a provision that you have to follow, which is cloud provider leveraging VMware software technology to stand up their own infrastructure. That means in order to join the rental part of the agreement of VCPP, you need to have the ability either to build your own data center or manage your customer's data centers completely. You own the license, but you need to have that hosting capability at your end. Now, obviously, uh, this suits to, to the partners who have a bit of investment intensive mindset and they're actually halfway through the journey of VMware products. Uh, but it's not, it's not all. The green part starts where VMware is offering all those services, the SaaS based services, without having too much investment on the data center side. So if you look at the green side here, cloud provider leveraging VMware SaaS solutions without investment into their own data center. So this is the area we'll be covering in presentation today. We'll be covering the green, the green part where the catch is that on the blue side, you have almost 98% of the products offered by VMware from SRM to vSAN to all the other things that, that VMware builds and beautifully builds, um, but you need to have the ability to build your own data center. But on the MSP side, you don't really need to have a data center to, to, to be built, but the catch is that the only select services are offered at the moment, but to on a, on a positive side, VMware keeps on expanding this portfolio. Right now, there are around 13 services offered, but they, are keep, they keep on adding, adding into it. For example, Carbon Black is expected to be added into this portfolio by Q1 of next year. Uh, we, we can see Velo Cloud hopefully will be coming back into it. But right now, we have, pro, uh, we have services like VMC and AWS. We have realized automation uh, cloud. We have cloud director services, and we have um, <clears throat> Workspace One mobility services, which we'll be covering today. By the way, you, get, you guys can ask any questions in the chat box during the slides. Uh, I just mentioned the slide numbers. We'll go through those slides if you like. Um, generally speaking, the MSP model uh, offers you deliver full-fledged managed services on your own. Also, it enables you to, or empowers you to build your PSO practices around it. You are the one who will be providing the services. So the working relationship between, um, between a normal licensing and this licensing is that you will have a direct relationship in terms of procurement with VMware and Ingram Micro would act as a billing agent in the process. We'll help you get the right billing. We'll help you get the right pricing for it. But generally speaking, the approach is that you'll be buying those licenses through, uh, through a certain portal by VMware directly. Um, and then obviously you can wrap it around with your own PSO services. As I mentioned, there, uh, not everything is offered under the MSP services, but they keep on expanding these, um, uh, this portfolio. This slide would actually give you a bit of a highlight of what services are offered and what sort of commitments uh, are given and then what sort of trainings you may need. <clears throat> So you can see on VMware Cloud and AWS, uh, we have a Cloud Partner Navigator. That is actually out of the scope of the conversation today, but we, we will be addressing this in, in the future presentations with you guys. There's an annual commitment and you need to have certain set of trainings for it. So if you have questions about this, just reach out to us and we'll, we'll tell you exactly <clears throat> what sort of trainings are required. Now you have right in the middle of the page, you can see Workspace One Mobility. That is the one we are talking today. Um, it, once the uh, service is activated to you, uh, those softwares will be available to you under your MyVMware account. Um, there are multiple years offering uh, in the subscription terms, and then there are a certain set of trainings that are required. So VTSP Mobility and VSP Mobility are the two key trainings that you need to have. And number one, they're free trainings, and number two, they're available in the partner university. Um, Christopher, you're asking about PSO. PSO is professional services. 
Um, so professional services like technical support, you want to give additional technical support, you want to have installation services given to your customers, you can offer this with, uh, with, with this white label approach. So another thing uh, which um, I wanted to address here is that Workspace ONE is obviously produced by VMware, but your customers would not know this. And what that really means is that whatever Workspace ONE is offered is what's offered by you. That's what we call, love, uh, this is what we call white labeling. So what you're doing, what you're seeing on this screen is you're white labeling everything that VMware is offering with your own brand. So what we are helping, Uber Micro is helping partners is to do not remain as cloud provider or service provider, but become a brand that can differentiate uh, in the market. So everything you see on the screen is white labeled. You can, um, uh, whatever is offering under Workspace ONE is what you are offering now to your customers without your customers knowing that the backend technology is Workspace ONE for that matter. They don't even need to know this. And then with those services, like uh, the single sign-on and different other offerings that we have under Workspace ONE, these are actually offered by you now. And then in order to have those installation done uh, at the customer's end, you can have your PS services or PS uh, professional services attached to it. This is where it becomes really helpful. And that also adds up to your uh, ability to, um, to add up additional margin to your deals. I hope, uh, Christopher, that answered your question. So let's get right into it. Workspace ONE, what exactly that product is uh, and how do we package it to bring it to the market? Now for that, we have Qua, who is the solution architect, senior solution architect at VMware for end user computing. Qua, I'm um, giving you the control of the presentation. Thank you very much, Umar. All right, hello everybody. My name is Kwa from uh, VMware. So uh, today I will talk about um, managed services, okay, for the VMware uh, digital workspace uh, solution set, right? So for under VMware, we have uh, several category of solutions, okay. One of which, one of our strongest brand is uh, Workspace One. So under Workspace ONE, okay, there are two key products. One is Workspace ONE UEM. I think uh, uh, most of us should be familiar with this. Uh, previously, it was called uh, AirWatch. Now, I, uh, it's just a rebranding to Workspace ONE UEM, Unified Endpoint Management. So this is the solution. Um, Qua, Qua, can, I, can I interrupt for a minute, please? Um, we, we can't see your screen. You can't see my screen? Yeah, it's white. Yes, we can see it now. So Perfect. when I put it to uh, Thank you. present the board, can you see now? Can you still see? Yeah, uh, no, we can't see it now. Oh, okay. Uh, let me change the, let me change to the uh, whole screen then. Hold on for a second. All right, uh, is this good? <laughs> uh, yeah, all good okay. now. Perfect. now. All right, all right. Now. Sorry, everyone. I have a bit, you know, I could just get, you know, I just interrupt a lot of people. So sorry about that. Go ahead, go on. Thank, thank you. Uno. So um, just a quick uh, recap for that. So we are, today we are talking, uh, we'll be focusing our attention on Workspace ONE UEM, Unified Endpoint Management, all right? And that, um, with uh, Workspace ONE, as you can see in the, the top uh, two bars here, we have uh, Workspace ONE Intelligence and Workspace ONE Access, which is our identity manager and our MFA solution called VMA Verify. So these two components are also included in Workspace ONE, all right? And that uh, it will be part of the offering uh, in different uh, additions, which I will come to uh, later. On the right-hand side, we have a uh, Carbon Black. So Carbon Black, we're coming, uh, early next uh, quarter and this will be uh, part will be part of the MSP offering as well because as you can see uh, carbon black is our next generation antivirus and it just goes hands in hand okay with the management of uh, devices right left hand side is uh, horizon so horizon is 
another um, product that another uh, um, product that is part of Workspace One. Okay, it is also included in our additions. All right, uh, but it can be also be offered uh, as uh, a standalone itself. So today's the focus is on Workspace One UEM, and with Workspace One UEM, it includes parts of uh, Horizon. So to quickly, uh, let's talk about uh, Horizon uh, very quickly on how it can be deployed. So Horizon can be deployed on premise. So you can, if you see on the left hand side, right, it can be deployed in your premise, or you can deploy be deployed on the different uh, clouds uh, available, whether it's a VMC, IBM. Uh, Azure and uh, there, there are other clouds like uh, Oracle Cloud, uh, Google, and uh, any future more. This will also be uh, supported, right? So if you see our addition here, all right, on the right most uh, addition, which is a Workspace One Enterprise for VDI, okay, it includes a the Horizon Universal subscription add-on, all right. So this is where the horizon okay can the horizon subscription license is part of your workspace one license okay so bear that in mind we will come to that when we talk about um, how you can package offering because it can include a uh, virtual uh, desktop session as part of your workspace one offering all right so back to this we have a uh, different uh, additions right uh, express standard advanced and enterprise so we won't talk about F express express is a very limited and uh, it's it is you should only use this if you are targeting this on uh, a very uh, special case where uh, they are very very price conscious and you just want uh, to have a very basic uh, manageability okay but as a managed service provider you want to provide more than just basic uh, manageability, right? So that's where you should start with standard, okay, advanced or enterprise. And these are the uh, differences. So from this page, you can see uh, enterprise addition will include uh, the intelligence uh, capability, right? These are uh, intelligence, these are AI capabilities that we've included in Workspace ONE that includes app analytics, uh, automations, vulnerability, um, intelligence, okay, um, mobile flows, which is uh, the ease of uh, approvals, integrations with third party tools, all into one. Okay, so that is in the enterprise edition. Now, if you see on under access management, we have included single sign-on, we have included the identity, an entire identity provider, and an entire cloud-based identity manager, okay, even the standard edition. This used to be a category product by itself, the IDP. Now we have included it in the standard edition, all right? And MFA as well in our base standard edition. Now next, we can do the, the differentiation between standard and advanced. You can see there's, these are all the, VMware created uh, mobile apps, right? Like a browser, like a content repository, like an email client and so on. So these are specific uh, apps to provide a full protection of your corporate um, uh, data, okay? A full uh, email client, right? So it can provide full DLP, data leak prevention, right? So this is available in the advanced edition. And desktop management. So we have advanced desktop management here. So if you need to manage mobile devices and uh, iOS and Android devices, you will go for the advanced edition. And we have another one here, which is tel telecom management tool. So we can help you to monitor, okay, manage, Okay, and do some uh, compliance uh, policies, okay, against the cellular data usage, right? You can set uh, your own threshold, and should the user exceed certain thresholds, you can set up alerts, and uh, you can set up some uh, policies, okay, to alert the users or the, or the managers, all right? So in the enterprise edition, um, it also includes, okay, virtual apps, virtualized uh, apps, you, um, I think a lot of us know about virtual desktop where you can virtualize the entire desktop, 
Okay, however, uh, a little uh, a lesser known function is virtual apps because a lot of times you may not need to virtualize the whole desktop. You just need to virtualize the apps. Okay, for example, you need uh, to virtualize a browser to allow an intranet uh, access or need to virtualize a desktop application. Okay, on a Mac device, for example, on or on a mobile devices being able to access a Windows application, right? So virtual apps will do, and the workspace web enterprise edition will do. But if you need a full desktop, you go with the workspace web enterprise for VDI edition, right? We also have uh, recently introduced two new additions with what we call MDM essentials and MM essentials. MDM essentials, so if you look at the diagram on the left hand side, okay, we support only, it support only iOS and Android. On the right hand side, MM essentials, it supports uh, Windows and Mac. MM stands for modern management. So if you have specific use cases, specific uh, customer requirements that only, they only need to uh, support the uh, laptops, for example, laptop desktops, okay, you can go with the MM essentials. If they only need to manage mobile devices, you go and go with the MDM essentials. So these are the price point, these are the list price. So in terms of pricing as a MSP, you will get a, a discount off the list price. So this uh, pricing here is for your comparison, okay? And later when we talk about packaging, we will refer back to this. So you can see from the uh, standard uh, edition, the MDM essentials is uh, at a lower cost, okay? And the MM uh, essential, Okay, is at the, the same about the same price point as advanced edition. So in so MM edition has a slightly more um, desktop intelligence capability that advanced edition uh, do not have. Okay, earlier I've shown you some of the intelligence features that's only available in enterprise. Okay, but for MM essentials, those intelligence capability for laptops and desktops are available in the MM Essentials. So, so that's why it calls for a price point, which is about the same as advanced, but does not include, okay, iOS and Android. Okay, and Enterprise Edition will, of course, include uh, everything, right? The universal add-on will be at uh, this price point, okay, per uh, additional to the Enterprise uh, Edition or to the Advanced Edition. It's an add-on, for both advanced and the enterprise edition. So, but uh, um, once it comes to um, uh, pricing, okay, do come to us and then we can advise you accordingly. Uh, it is actually uh, quite uh, uh, simple. Okay, our pricing uh, packaging is actually uh, one of the uh, simplest in the industry. Okay, so it's either advanced, uh, standard advanced, uh, I think more, about 60% of uh, my uh, customer base, okay, my partner base as well, because I cover the region, they all they start with standard or advanced. And in those use cases where they only need certain specific device type, they choose MBM essentials or MM essentials. So stick with this for um, as a beginning, right? So when we we are talking about managed services, right? We're not talking about the product, we're not talking about sales through the product, uh, the resale route, okay, because you are the managed service provider, you own the license, okay? And then you package your service offering, including Workspace ONE, and then you offer it, uh, like Wumo said, you white label it, right? You can call it your own uh, uh, MDM solution. You don't have to call it Workspace ONE. You can label it and you can position it, market it and sell it to your customers as, okay? Your uh, company's names, MDM managed services, right? And it includes Workspace ONE. So the customers uh, may or may not uh, know that. Maybe you want, from a branding perspective, you want to uh, tell the customer that it is powered by Workspace ONE. It helps with your overall managed services branding. But if it is your services, you own the service and you priced it, okay? And customer pays you, okay? Customer doesn't pay VMware, okay? Customer pays you, you price it, you sell it to the customer, customer pays you, and you offer, these are some of the services uh, recommendation or packaging uh, categories that uh, you can um, uh, offer to your customers, 
Okay, so these are just some suggestions on how you can package offering. First, on the left hand side, okay, buy um, the features, right? Just now I talked about standard advanced enterprise, you can package it by, this, uh, by those uh, features. Next, the second uh, column here is if you are a third party uh, cloud uh, provider for another solutions, you can actually include, right? You ought to include Workspace One as that offering as well and then offer it as a package. Some of our partners calls it, you know, uh, office package. Okay, they target SMEs. They say, I'm going to offer you a office package, which includes device security management. So in it, it may include the email service, okay, plus Workspace ONE, okay? Or you may include uh, like Salesforce or Workday or any of these third-party solutions, and then you include Workspace ONE as your overall offering or as a, uh, add on. Okay, so this is the second one is, is very popular for partners who are also a reseller of another service. So, the third one is device as a service. This is where you include the hardware in your offering. So, if you are a laptop, desktop reseller, or mobile devices uh, reseller, okay, you can include Workspace One in it. So, instead of selling the hardware, you can say, hey, I sell you managed service. Okay, it includes the hardware plus mobility management. And then the, the fourth category is industry specific offering. This is for uh, partners who are um, specialized in this uh, category, whether it's a healthcare, logistics or retail, right? You, you have your customer base, right? you are supplying uh, services. It could be today, it could be, um, you know, hosting services, it could be uh, server workloads, it could be databases, it could be ERP solutions, but now you can include mobility solutions as well to this to the to the specific industry that you have a strong um, uh, affiliation with. All right. So just now in that uh, diagram, we see professional services. So when do you include the uh, professional services? Right. So our advice is that if it's a small customer, okay, as you can see the price point earlier, right, uh, $3.78. So you have a discount off it and when you provide your managed services, okay, you uh, typically the partner can price it at, of course, you don't, you can't price it at $3.78, right? you should price it more than that. If you price it like $5 or $6, okay, you have a markup and that's where your revenue comes in for this managed service. But if it is a small customer, as in if this is like a hundred device deal, okay, or, or lesser than a 500 device deal. So if you consider the markup, then on a monthly basis, the, um, the, the revenue to you may not be high, okay? This is where you can include professional services. And especially when you are targeting small customers, small customers do not have the IT skill sets to manage, uh, to, to start off, to kickstart, this uh, device management uh, project. So this is where the professional, the one-off professional services comes in, okay, to help you kickstart this project with the customer, okay, and then it will also uh, substantiate and also increase your overall revenue for that smaller customer. Now for large customers, if you take my uh, example just now, if you mark up, uh, you know, a couple of dollars for each license. And if they go into the thousands of devices, your managed services, per your monthly subscription that you receive from the customer is quite high already. So you ought to include some professional services already because the, that customer will be asking, okay, why am I paying uh, this amount of money and then multiply by so many devices, right? So this again is to justify the services that the markup that you are providing, okay, in addition to the license cost, right? Or the second option is that you include it as part of your managed services. So as part of your managed services, you said, uh, later I will show you a list of services that uh, you can add on, right? It could be, um, you know, provisioning, it could be setting up the policies, it could be uh, helping them with single sign-on configuration and so on and so forth. And we include two, okay? Uh, annual visits uh, to uh, set up on site uh, for you in this uh, uh, price at this price point per month per device. Okay, and then the right hand side is of course if the customer needs to. Some large customers do not know how to start 
with uh, Workspace ONE. So this is where you can uh, include uh, uh, professional services as uh, an additional, right? So at this monthly services plus uh, professional services. So these are additional, uh, uh, additional package, additional PSO offering. Okay, as well as uh, requirements gathering. These are for larger customers who have specific requirements. And also we have many uh, managed services partners who also go for bids. Okay, they go for RFPs or they go for bids. And, in, and as you know, in those bids, there are a lot of professional services requirements, including um, you know, requirements gathering, including uh, user testings, and including all those. All, all those would be uh, one of professional services. But at then, at the overall uh, licensing for the solution, it will be your managed service instead of being a uh, a resale uh, product SKU. Okay, so let's uh, look at some examples of how you can package it. So at the standard editions, these are some of the offering. Uh, you we, we suggest we, that you can uh, offer right. This is to help with a BYOD uh, devices where okay the users are bringing on their device. Now um, two folds right. If uh, nowadays I can I think uh, in a, and especially in Australia in ANZ a lot of uh, companies are allowing the users to bring their own devices and at, and also uh, some of the perhaps uh, mid sized or larger companies they are also providing. Uh, the devices itself, okay, to the user. Of course, if the user leaves the company, they have to return the device. So such devices, uh, including BYODs, have to be managed. So this is where Workspace One comes in, and you can offer it. Uh, and you, and then the second column is, you will include services to help the uh, administrator configure for single sign-on for those uh, third-party CS applications, and all those two capabilities are included in the standard edition. Next for advanced edition, this, so this is where you want to provide a full security for the uh, customers if they have a um, and they have an end-to-end -end security uh, policy. Okay, or uh, nowadays we coin it as a zero trust. They want uh, a fully secured uh, device. Um, this could be uh, legal firms or it could be healthcare. And actually, you know, it actually um, crosses any industry nowadays. Uh, any industries. Um, they need their emails to be secure and then they need access to their internal documents to be secure because these documents could be priceless. It could be, uh, you know, pre-product launch uh, design documents. And uh, today, a lot of this data are being viewed and are being stored in uh, mobile devices. And which are left unprotected. So this is this is in today's context quite unacceptable. So that is where the advanced edition comes in, where you can fully secure your email clients, your document viewer, as well as have a VPN access into the intranet. And should the device be compromised, you can wipe it. Okay, you can wipe the enterprise data or you can choose to wipe the entire phone. So these are capabilities in the advanced edition. Next, uh, we have enterprise edition. So this is where you have the intelligence uh, in it, okay? And then the fifth one is where you want to include BDI as part of your managed service. That means you will host, okay, if it's on-premise, you will host the uh, VM session in your office. So definitely you will charge managed services at a higher markup for this because you are providing a virtual desktop in addition uh, to device management. Okay, so uh, some uh, pictorial view of, uh, you know, uh, on the work, the data flow for single sign-on. So uh, in this example, uh, salesforce.com or any uh, cloud applications, as long as it supports uh, SAML, and in today's context, I think uh, almost all, um, uh, you know, SaaS applications support SAML and we can configure it for single sign-on so that only on managed devices can the user log in to Salesforce. Now, only on managed devices. So even if the user is a valid user of Salesforce, okay, you can stop them from accessing Salesforce because they can easily just go to the uh, internet uh, they go uh, and lock in, right? Because they are valid user, but with single sign-on configured with Workspace One, you can actually stop that. 
the user, when they attempt to log in, they say, okay, your device is not managed. Please enroll Workspace ONE before you attempt to log in to Salesforce. Okay, so this is um, single sign-on and conditional access. MFA as well. So on uh, devices, you may require a second authentication because it could be at risk, for example. So these are, uh, there are certain conditions, for example, uh, outside of certain IP ranges or certain regions, you can request for a second factor. Okay. And second factor, we always, uh, for the sake of productivity, we always advise it uh, to be uh, more uh, cautious, right? Uh, not uh, be uh, overly uh, 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 enforcing this because it will be quite uh, counterproductive, right? For the user to access Salesforce every time they have to punch in uh, this uh, second factor. So all this flexibility of this uh, configuration is provided. Right, automation. So this is available in the uh, enterprise intelligence. So uh, enterprise addition with uh, intelligence uh, add-on uh, to it. So one of its capability is uh, automation, whereby it can uh, auto create, auto integrate to third party tools for uh, ticket creation, uh, for example. All right. You in that the fifth category, fourth category, they talk about industry specific. Um, capabilities where you may be providing the device like a, a rugged device for healthcare or rugged device for uh, logistics for the uh, uh, delivery person okay for signing or for navigation so these devices these rugged devices needs to be uh, managed and then you may also need to have uh, additional okay capabilities um, to uh, additional visibility into those devices, okay, from uh, vulnerability management, okay, security uh, management, okay, to battery life, and uh, so on. So all this is included only in the enterprise edition. Okay, so I just want to highlight some of the key features that uh, we talked about uh, just now, right? Single sign-on, uh, mobile uh, email uh, management. Okay, so these two are the these two capabilities are what uh, our partners use most. Okay, when they are selling their managed services, that means we can help the customers manage their emails. Okay. Next, uh, is uh, we have those uh, special uh, VMware the developer applications as well as uh, to customers who are developers. So if they have developers and they are developing apps, okay, you can look at our app management, our SDK. Okay, that is included. Um, in standard and for app wrapping, it is in advanced. So these are only for customers uh, that have, they have their developers. So next up, this one, okay, if they have a desktop, so this is where a laptop to desktop, this is where advanced comes in, okay? And then um, access, so access is our advanced remote management. So it provides a remote a control or remote view into the devices. So this helps them to troubleshoot the device. Okay, this is an add-on to all the addition. So during uh, COVID times, uh, uh, start, we started uh, mid last year to uh, this year, right? We have seen an increased uptake in access. Okay, this is the new name for it, it's called access. Uh, huge uptake for this, the customers because the users are at home, right? And then they need the uh, support, they need um, basic, uh, help their support and uh, you know like you know why is this setting not working why are my apps not launching what is this button what uh, what should i do the, this remote uh, control remote view of their laptops okay or their mobile devices and mobile devices especially if you are doing category uh, support right if you're helping the uh, healthcare and logistics uh, users on those uh, rugged mobile devices this is where the remote uh, assistant uh, is, is, is greatly uh, needed, okay? So during COVID times, we see a huge uptake of this for our laptops, uh, remote support, okay? So third party, this one, um, just to give you a, a, a glimpse of this from a adoption perspective, I mean, we, we, there are several surveys then, the adoption of SaaS applications is very high. And I believe there are many, I think many amongst us here today, uh, are also a, a, perhaps a reseller of some of this product. So you can actually include the Workspace ONE, okay, as 
your offering as one as part of your offering as a uh, upsell to one of your existing uh, cloud solution. Okay, device as a service. So this would include the the device. So you can see the breakdown here. You, you include the equipment. Okay, and sometimes you can also include the subscription. So if you are also a reseller of uh, data plans, right? You include the SIM card, for example. You can actually include that in the managed service offering. So as part of the device, you include the SIM card, and then you include all this. You can see here, deployment support, premium support, fleet uh, flexibility, uh, solution. And this could be a solution. Hardware, software, monitoring. This could uh, this. It comes with Workspace One, or you may have a third-party solution that comes on, okay, and so on. So you can see at uh, asset recovery. So asset recovery is where at the end of a term you can, uh, or they, when they lost the device, uh, you can put in some uh, insurance markup, and then you can uh, provide a second device for free. So these are all the additional managed services you can uh, put on top, okay, of the hardware. You include Workspace One, obviously. And then as part of a monthly subscription, so instead of selling this uh, iPhone at uh, you know a thousand dollars, you can say no. Okay, this iPhone includes my managed services and it is offered to you. Okay, fifty dollars a month, for example, for three years. Okay, and then at the end of three years, so I go to the next slide. So at the end of three years, okay, you get a new phone. All right. So this is the 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 move. The trend towards subscription model that we talk about. Okay, rather than owning, right, the DVD, for example, you subscribe to the service and you can watch any amount of movies. You don't own the DVD, the movies, the box set at all. Okay, you can to subscribe to it and then you can have the service on a monthly basis, right? So we see this also a lot for our laptop sellers. So if you are also, if you are a laptop reseller or mobile devices reseller or data plan uh, resellers, okay, you can include that in your uh, service, okay, and maybe you partner with a hardware reseller if you are not one, and then you can offer the entire, okay, hardware inclusive of a software management, okay, as a monthly subscription for a term, okay. This is just an example, three year. Typically, we see three year because that is typically the uh, hardware refresh. Uh, timeline three years i that's what we see okay and then you, you can you can choose to reclaim those uh, devices or you can you can tell them that uh, the users can own them because at the end of three years they the 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 value of those may have uh, depreciated by a lot okay so these are all flexible flexible arrangement that you can uh, customize for your customers all right so uh, just a quick one on uh, modern management so uh, perhaps uh, some of us may not know that uh, Workspace One can be used to manage uh, laptops, okay, Windows 10 especially. Okay, I think a lot of us are familiar with tools like SCCM or like uh, AD or like GPOs, things like that. But uh, going forward for modern management, we are, we are seeing uh, an uptake of using, okay, uh, NBM solution or UEM solutions like Workspace One to entirely manage laptops. You know, you don't need XCCM, you know, you don't need uh, the GPOs, you don't need all these tools, okay? Workspace One can actually manage your Windows 10, okay? And your iOS and Android, everything, okay? We have many large customers who have converted to Workspace One to manage all devices types, okay? In addition, we also manage Linux, and then in future, there will be a lot of IoT devices and we will manage them all. Okay, so it is one tool to manage all device type. Okay, so finally for industry specific offering, so we are seeing a lot of use of mobility devices in the category by task workers. Okay, so you can see almost cross uh, in, in Cross industry, isn't it? Right. You can see education. We can, we see uh, you know uh, students uh, being issued uh, uh, tablets, right? These are owned by the school and provided for the students to use. Okay. And all these uh, tablets needs to be managed, right? Okay. What if they are lost and stolen? How do you locate them? How do you wipe them? How do you ensure uh, secure usage and so on? 
manufacturing, you see retail orders, all the, the increased, uh, you know, take up of uh, mobile devices, okay, as well as special purpose devices like the Zebra uh, devices, rugged devices, you can, uh, you can drop them, okay, without breaking it, uh, disinfectant uh, ready uh, devices, uh, mobile printers, okay, devices with barcode readers, Bluetooth, uh, uh, Bluetooth uh, re readers, and, and so on. Okay, RFID readers, I meant. Okay, all this needs to be managed. And all these are typically Android devices. All these need to be managed before they are handed over to the task workers, right? So that you don't lose them. Or if when you lose them, you make sure you, you have the capability to secure it or wipe it, right? Because you don't want corporate data to be leaked out, right? So if you look at the right-hand side, these are the, some of the devices that are in use in this uh, category. All right, so the, uh, to summarize, these are all the additional services you can provide on top of Workspace ONE, okay, on top of our solutions. And like we have said, right, you white label it and you offer it. Okay, so you offer it, you price it, you mark up, Okay, you justify your markup with all these additional services, right? And then you, this is the managed service provider model. So this is what uh, MSP is all about, okay? So to, this is a summary of um, what we have talked about today. And these are just uh, suggested uh, packaging. So you can see, you can offer it all this, these are the listing of the services that you can offer, right? Whether is it, uh, you know, AD integration, profile uh, creations, apps provisioning, and so on. So these are all uh, workspace one feature descriptions, okay? Feature services descriptions. So I, for example, I label it as MDM, I call it MDM plus, uh, I call it email management, intelligence, and so on. Okay, these are just some suggestions. And then at the bottom, you may want to include uh, security uh, additions like uh, Carbon Black, okay, for the desktops, or, oh, sorry, let me go forward again. And, or for mobile devices, these are our partners who can provide uh, anti-malware protections for mobile devices. Okay. So as so, sometimes the customer may ask, right? Why do we need your managed service? I my I have IT. I have an IT department, right? I have people who do, who do this, right? So you you can tell them that hey, you know your IT is not free, and you should know that. Okay, we have we have uh, done studies. Uh, companies have done studies on this. Uh, IT support is not free. IT support, in fact, is quite expensive. So you can see the cost for desktop support is at the $69 uh, per month, right? So your managed services, so you can justify the markup, right? To, to the customers to say that for these devices, okay, for the use of Workspace ONE, you don't need to, to know how to manage it. We will do it for you, okay? And we will provide the support for you. Your users will call us. They, your users will not call your IT, okay? So we are lifting. Okay, some of these um, services from your IT, okay, to, uh, to you, all right? So that your IT, you don't need to skill them up because they, they may not know, most of the time, they do not know how to manage workspace one. They're new to this, okay? So this is where the managed services comes in, all right? So earlier I talked about some of the, the packaging and some of uh, how you price them. So this is uh, one, of our uh, partner, right, Telstra. You can see, uh, this is on their public website, right? So you can see that they offer it, they call it TMDM. Okay, you do a, if you do a Google search, you can see this, they call it TMDM, they, total, they completely white label it, okay? But they use, uh, they call it powered by a VMware AirWash, right, okay, to add uh, the, the strength of our brand to their overall brand. And they, they price it at $5, okay? Uh, and you, you can see their labeling, they call it device protection, offering mobile application management, mobile content management, and so on. So this is a, a telco in uh, Southeast Asia. You can see the price point in the US dollar, $3 per month, 
okay they sell it at three dollars per month as low as three dollars per month okay because they get a discount off the 378 so they are offering an, it at very low okay this could be at uh, for the mass if they have certain uh, quantity so they call it lock-in and other price point and they call it lock-in protect device protect enterprise mobility you can see these are just sampling of uh, the pricing that is available publicly for you to reference okay now uh, i just want to uh, talk about professional service some of uh, some of us may think that hey uh, you know professional services for workspace one may be difficult to sell okay but not true you know because a lot of companies lack this uh, capabilities to deploy and to uh, start up uh, workspace one you can see here hpe professional services this is on uh, the public website during our vm world okay worldwide conference uh, last year they are our invited speaker and uh, hp is providing professional services for the implementation of workspace one so such services are in demand so there is uh, a space there is uh, a market for professional services so that is where when you uh, include the, your managed services offering okay you should consider providing professional services because uh, customers themselves can't do it so how do you get started right so if um, this this are some of the quick start guides. you can see this uh, available publicly okay on this website so as if you are a new partner you may be thinking okay how how do i how do i start this right i mean we talk a lot about all these features how do we start this we have a quick start guide it tells you step by step how to do this so as you can see here install the AirWatch cloud connector to integrate with your ad right we start with this and so on and so forth so now this also adds as your uh, service listing. So this is, this, if you do not do this for your customer, customers got to do it themselves. Can they do it themselves? Are they equipped to do it themselves? Do they have the skill sets and the IT staff to do this themselves? Okay. If they, they, they don't, they have to send their staff to, to be trained to do this and then it will take off uh, a lot of time, a lot of time resources wasted. So that is why, Okay, managed services, there is a market for managed services for partners like you to provide this set of this sample sets of offering of uh, uh, functions on behalf of the customers themselves. Okay, so typically a uh, day zero onboarding, that's where you, uh, uh, you identify the team to work with at the customer side, we talk about integration and you start with the configuration, um, the enrollment, this is where you can go on site. To help the, the uh, user to enroll those devices right you can provide uh, training and documentation you, you will continue to monitor the progress and the rollout of, of the device enrollment which takes maybe takes about a month and then uh, ongoing support so this is where the managed services uh, comes in all right so next i want to talk about uh, quickly uh we want to talk about uh, our competitors and then i will hand it back to uh, uma so from the competitive side I think uh, you, you may have heard of some of these solutions on the right hand side. I mean, uh, just, just to highlight, if you would to go to any of our, you know, um, third party, uh, any analyst, okay, Forrester, Gartner, and so on, we're always on uh, the top right quadrant, we're always on the leader's uh, position. So some of these are our competitors, okay, like SOTI, Microsoft, and so on. But uh, if you look at that report, right, you do, if you look at partial third party reports, you know that our, our strength over all of this all of these uh, vendors in fact we have been doing this for more than seven eight years now and we have always been in the leadership position and if you use this uh our comp this competitive products you notice that these are their price point we are offering the whole the combined capabilities of all these various uh, tool sets okay at the 25 dollars per user per month this is the, the maximum a price point as you can see for a standard advice edition this is not even at 25 dollars it's at three seventy eight and six dollars right so that is that leaves room okay for you to upsell in future to enterprise edition number one and number two it that leaves room for you to put in your managed services uh markup right so instead of getting all these other solutions okay from a security point of view, from a device management point of view, from a uh, Windows management point of view, okay, from a specific uh, device type point of view, we can have it uh, all managed by Workspace. 
All right. So um, we we will value your partnership. Okay. So we definitely believe uh, in partnership, and that uh, as a managed service provider, okay, together, okay, we can uh, service this our customers better. Okay, with services provided by you and uh, Workspace One from uh, VMware. So I hand it uh, back to your woman. Thank you so much, Kai. It was a great presentation. A lot of material to go through. Um, once you move over the controls to me, I just need to go through a couple of slides just to uh, cover um, some of the basic steps. So now that you know how you can package this stuff, and I really appreciate for you guys for staying over um, so far. Um, these are really, really important stuff, and this is why we're actually extending it for at least five more minutes uh, just to cover it up. Now, in order to get the most out of this, um what's best than actually going for a month-to-month -month basis and this is where the msp program really stands out um and what you see on the screen is the package structure on the mobility end um this is uh the, these two tables will highlight what different levels you can join in for and this is actually a monthly commitment um column one actually defines the discount that you're going to be getting so we're looking at table a for example column uh, one defines what sort of discount you're going to get off msrp um, the monthly commitment level is how much dollar-based investment you are focusing on at the moment. So if you're actually in the, in the beginning of the journey or you're SMB, you may want to start as, as small as $500, uh, and this is USD, by the way, uh, and then so on and so forth. If you have more customers, you can definitely move up, uh, up a level. Uh, table B defines if you have partnership with VCPP on a rental scale. Remember the two uh, program model that I showed you before? Uh, this, uh, if I would just quickly go back to the slide, this slide actually tells you if you have a commitment on the blue side of the screen, then your commitment level would be at dollar based commitment would be zero dollars. So it's it makes more sense for any partner who are already linked with BCPP on the rental scale to join the MSP program. And by, by MSP program, I mean any of those 13 services that you can join. Now, every uh, one of those services have different tables like this one. This is very specific to mobility or workspace one. Another question that we keep on um, getting from people is, are we specific to any specific addition of uh, workspace one in this case? The answer is no. You can actually, with VCPB MSP program, you can go ahead and buy the advanced or enterprise, depending on what your customer needs are. Um, it's a very simple pricing model in that context. So the additions would not make any difference. It's more of a dollar-based commitment level that, that makes the difference here. The table A is for the new partner. Table B it was the partner who have uh, existing relationship on the, uh, on the rental side. Uh, table A has five levels. Um, off discount and this discount is offered off MSRP. Um, quickly going through the process, the operational flow is pretty simple. Uh, what you do, uh, you join the program, you get yourself trained with MSP mobility and, and uh, uh, sorry, VSP mobility, VMware sales professional mobility and VTSP, which is VMware technical sales professional mobility. Uh, these are the two accreditations, these are free these are available in Partner University. Uh, once you've done that, then you'll have the commit level at level four. Uh, this is where Ingram Micro will be able to send you a contract and then you will be able to sign it. Once you sign the agreement, VMware takes about 24 hours to build up your environment where you can then encapsulate with, with your new customers into it. And then you start placing the orders. Now the orders are placed directly with VMware because this discount uh, as we saw in the table before, is actually based off MSRP. So 10% or 15% or 25% is off MSRP. Ingram Micro, as an aggregator in this equation, works as a billing agent for you. Uh, then we will, at the end of each month, between first to fifth of each month, we recommend you report all your usage. But by default, everything you purchase on the portal where you are on point six is automatically it pulled in into the commerce portal and then we'll be looking at the, this report and we'll be sending you the bill accordingly minus the discount so if you go back now into uh, into the screen you see that for example you invested about five hundred dollars if in a month uh we'll send you a bill of four fifty dollars because we are the billing agent and we take that ten percent or whatever the level you have signed up for from that billing 
Um, this is, as you see at the bottom, a one-time setup is, you know, up till the 0.5 and then from 6 as you need whenever you want to order something. And then uh, on 7 and 8, this is actually on a monthly basis. Uh, this is the basic <clears throat> extent of relationship. Uh, what's going on here is uh, VMware is the producer of the product. MSPs have a direct relationship in order and support with VMware, aggregator, which is in your micro in this equation, is going to be acting as a billing agent. We'll maintain your uh, your purchase history as per the e-commerce portal, but we'll be billing you according to that level that you have signed up for. Uh, end user obviously does not know what technology is being used, as we've just seen in, in, the, in the great presentation by Qua that Telstra is using that and different other customers are using that. Um, so they don't really care whether you're using Workspace One or any other technology. What's happening here is you're, you're white labeling everything that VMware is offering. Um, quickly, I'm going to skip up these slides because this uh, presentation is getting a little bit over the time. So this is uh, the kind of services that Ingram Micro is helping out. Ingram Micro, again, to highlight, Ingram Micro is the only aggregator in Australia that offers the full catalog of VMware products and services from perpetual to cloud provider and to the PSO services. And another thing that I noticed in, in Qua's presentation was finance as a service. So Ingram Micro can help you with the financing part as well. Uh, moving on with what we can help you with, we can help you with the user media installation that actually really applies on the rental scale of things. Uh, then we sit, we sit with you, we discuss your cloud um, goals. We, we, we find out what you really want to do in the next 12 months or next two years. And we orchestrate um, our support for you, customized to your needs. So every customer, every partner is the key to us and every partner is different. So we actually uh, sit with them, we discuss um, your uh, proposition in the market. We'll help you uh, develop your own go-to-market strategies so that you can identify yourself as a differentiator. Every three months, we sit with you, we discuss uh, how the growth is going, what sort of help you need, and that's actually a regular process that we have at Ingram Micro. Moving on, as I said, uh, this is the second last slide, guys. So thank you so much for sticking on so long uh, to this presentation. Uh, we have a very dedicated team. We have a dedicated BDM, Michael Lemuso, who is focused on increasing uh, uh, our support to, to our, our dear partners. Uh, we have dedicated uh, solution architect focused on your environment, focused on your needs. And I'm the dedicated product manager for VCPP here at Ingram Micro. Um, and we, with this dedication, we assure you that we're gonna help you get the best out of this, uh, this program. Um, knowing this, I want to uh, make sure that you guys are aware of this, that this is actually the first webinar in the series of three webinars. So the next one is going to be going through uh, uh, the overview of VCPP and MSP program. Again, uh, we would love to take your questions. And uh, if you have any, any concerns, any questions about your environment, uh, you want to build up a cloud practice, let us know. And how do you reach us? Well, you can reach us through these uh, people. Michael Lemoso is the BDM, I am the product manager, and Kieran is the solution architect dedicated for VCP. I want to thank you once again for joining today's presentation. And thank you so much, Qua, for giving such a great packaging uh, information. We do have some questions, but I'm, because we're running out of time, there was one question that I got quite a lot, uh, that if there is a you know, a partner who is just joining the VCPP uh, journey as an SMB partner, what is the quick uh, packaging solution they should go for? What's your experience? Hey, hey hi, uh, this is uh, Kwa. Thanks, thanks for staying uh, back uh, for this. So as to get started, uh, first get trained and get those uh, competency done, uh, which Uma has uh, told you, it's all free, it's all online. And then start with the basic packaging. Just now, I have uh, uh, shown you many packaging, but just start with the basic, uh, just start with two, right? Standard and advanced. So because you want to win the customers uh, quickly, you want to get your business going quickly. So start with the basic offering and then as you grow, as you learn the technology more, as you get more familiar with the customer, you can actually uh, offer more. 
Great, great, perfect. Thank you so much, Kwa. Once again, Kwa, thank you so much for taking some time out and explaining to our partners how this packaging can help them uh, generate more revenue. Again, people, uh, this is a pay-as-you-go model. Uh, it's uh, it, it is as simple as as they can make the VMware technology available to 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 everybody. So uh, if you have questions, reach out to us um, and uh, we will be more than happy to assist you in the process. Once again, thank you everyone for joining today's presentation. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thanks.